Hello, uh, welcome back to another video from Cav Simulations on our custom FCU LCD for the Airbus A320 family. Today we're going to take a look at Moby Flight integration. So I did a video before on getting the device out of the box using our demo code um, flashing an, an Arduino and just getting a look at the device in action, um, just looping through some the sort of preset display functions. Today we're going to look at the plug and play Moby Flight, uh, plug and play in inverted commas Moby Flight um, compatibility function. So, as I said, the last video we had a look and we had the device flashing through these different functions. If you haven't watched that yet um, and you're not too worried about this, you just want to get in Moby Flight, just get it working, then don't worry so much about it. There's nothing there is required to make Moby Flight work. It's more just showing your device working and uh, you know more detailed dive in the code of how it works. But if that's not for you, then it's, you're not gonna miss out anything. But if you wanna uh, have a look at that, do. Or if you've just got the device and you just wanna get it out and working and playing around with it, then definitely watch that. It's, um, it will get you uh, having the display do what you can see on the screen now. So, Let's have a quick look through. The first thing we want to do is go to the GitHub repository and we want to go to the obviously the only option available with the FCU. And here we're going to go to the Moby Flight folder. In here are three files plus a readme. Um, and we're going to download these three here and download the folder from here. And there we go. Okay, so once you've downloaded the files, extract it out. It's uh, just these files here plus a readme, which we don't need. So you'll have the uh, the unextracted folder. Make sure you do uh, unextract it. Um, and then, yeah, we can just get rid of the readme. So it only has the text that we just saw there. Um, the I've also downloaded Moby Flight already, so we can do that again. So if we just go to the Moby Flight website. We go to download. And then we just download that there and it will give you the uh, the executable file as well. So we'll just get rid of that again. <clears throat> and then you'll have this uh, executable file here. Uh, the next thing we need to do is go and use this xloader function. If this is, you don't have to do this if you want to download the source code and manually compile it uh, through um, platform IO, you can do that. You need to go to my other repository. So you go to my other repositories, you want to click the Moby Flight firmware source here. And here we have uh, release versions and you can download the source code with these files here as well. Uh, and then you can compile it via platform IO. Um, and in order to do that, you just to have a this have a read of the Moby Flight readme, which is the original one here. So if you want to do it that way, you can. If you want to make sure of what code you're playing with, you can. It's all free and open source. You can do that. Um, but this is the just get it working version. So I've pre-compiled all the files for you here, and this is what we're going to do now. Xloader is a way to just put that. Uh, pre-compiled hex file directly onto the Arduino. So we're just going to open up that. Here is another a <clears throat> another GitHub repository. You just you can just here just download the whole thing as a zip, um, and then you'll end up with these files. Um, and then we have already downloaded those, so I will put that in there, just so we're all in the same place. So you'll end up with this downloaded uh, repository here, and there's this little application called xloader.exe. Um, you don't need to install it, it's just a standalone application. Now, uh, you need to make sure you are mega, um, so I can choose that, and I've got the 2560 mega. Um, what COM port it's on, and the baud rate will be yeah one one five two hundred. Now here we just need to choose the hex file. Okay, so we just need to find that. So we'll go into the Mobify folder and find our hex file, which is the only one available. And we click open. Now it's as simple as clicking that button. We're going to see. I'm going to click the upload button here, and we see it flashes that firmware on there. Uh, 
and that says there it is done now we just need to make sure that the pins are the right way around for this firmware you can't change the pins on this firmware because it's pre-compiled so you must use the pins as they're listed here which is 12 11 and 8 and I actually have them slightly different on here so I just need to change those so now that the device has been uh, the new firmware flashed on I have to unplug it so we can the last display is removed uh, from the LCD and then we're just going to plug it back in and we can see the backlight is on which is as expected but the display is black and that is exactly what we are expecting here we're expecting the display to be um, not not have anything displayed at this point because we're not now cycling through the demo we're now running the live Moby flight firmware so we're going to just leave that there for a minute and we will go back to the PCs so the next thing we want to do is install Moby flight so we'll go back and we will run Moby flight here we're going to click install and we're going to run our create desktop shortcut as well just click finish and we'll run that here uh, so this is uh, as of recording this is the latest release 971 then we're going to just click ok here uh, we do obviously have to have the WASM module so we might as well install that now uh, simple as that uh, and the mobile flight support program I'd recommend you have a read of that uh, I already do so I'll just click maybe later for now because I do it on my uh, other install Okay, so this is the MobiFlight connector. Now, we have some other files here which we will need to use with the MobiFlight. We've got the Mega and the config file. So, let us do MobiFlight modules. Now, we can see that we have this MobiFlight Mega module which uh, it says old firmware update now because it's my custom firmware. So, it's not currently in line with the latest release uh, we're from MobiFlight, but that's fine. We can leave that as it is. It's custom firmware. That's exactly what we want. So, don't click update first firmware because otherwise you'll just remove the the custom stuff and the device won't work so you just need to leave this as it is but we're going to click open here we go into our mobile flight folder and here we have a config file that's what we want to open there the mobile flight mega config file and here this will give you LCD display or, and LCD display one. Now this is primed ready for the EFIS display when it comes out. So LCD display and LCD display one are your uh, FCU and your EFIS. Now the EFIS isn't yet available, but the firmware here is so hopefully again should just be a case of plug and play and this thing will just work but right now we've just got LCD display um, so we then click uh, upload config to the device click OK and that's done so now we our device is fully set up for Moby flight with our setup as we expected so now we click OK uh, they're still not changes upload your modules you will lose these changes if you close the form do you want to continue click yes because they have been done uh, this is just a slight uh, bug that's I think with the the connector uh, software not seeing this uh, custom firmware but I'm working um, with Sebastian on that in the future so just for now click OK it is on there it's fine if we go back to the modules we can open they're all there and again the only problem is oh it's old firmware so don't worry about that that is there and done the next thing we want to do is we want to click file open and here we have our Moby Flight FCU config here and we're going to click open and this is um, the config for the Flyby-Wire A320. Now you may or may not get this box pop up. If you've been using other Moby Flight modules then this may come up. All we need to do is this is just an orphan serial. We just need to click this and we want to sign it to this new one. So we just click assign. You'll do that once if this pops up and I it. okay done. So now we know that this is the current module here. Now this is all set up ready now. You can see if I bring back the camera here 
the screen has popped up with these startup symbols, i.e. things that are always going to be on that will never change. Um, so we can see that the device is working now. Okay, so, so now we've got everything uh, up and running there. We want to edit. And it's all going up to LCD display. So we can see now, if we go to the speed function, we've clicked the test button, we'll test this one by one, we can see we've got uh, 890 has popped up on the display there. So we'll just click stop on that. Uh, 890 will remain there because the LC, the way that the LCD works is that it uh, has, uh, that, that segment is left on until it's changed, basically. So we can click test uh, on that and that's fine when you click stop expect it to remain okay so what's happening here is we're sending a command and then equals and then a value to this here now <clears throat> if we look back at the arduino code that we looked at last video we can see here what happens is moby flight sends this string this word in this case we're looking for set speed dash which is here set speed dash then there'll be a value after it which is zero to one um, or any other number basically and then if we get that then it will call the speed dashes uh, function here so the the words here will be slightly different to here because obviously I needed some like minimal character usage here. So if we go back up to the speed, we've got set speed and then equals and then three set speed will call set speed mode for us with that value. So again, if we do the test, we get the 890 through there because it's calling set speed mode and then passing 890 to it because this is the test function. Um, so that is the same with sort of all the other things here. So if I now call, excuse me, if I now call this toggle track heading equals dollar, that will give us the toggle track heading mode function. So all of these are set up now and then all based on the SIM variables from the FlybyWire A320. So we then just click save here, make sure everything is done here. We need to make sure that all of these outputs here are changed. You can see some currently say FCU, some say LCD display. We need to actually go in and all these ones, we just need to make sure that they are, because we're using different devices, you see LCD display, we just need to click OK and that's changed. So that's the next thing you need to do because the config file was set up with a device that was called FCU. Yours could be different, it could even be blank. We need to make sure that we set the output here. So we're just going to go through and we'll just change all of these. It is just a case of clicking the edit button and then it will automatically say, LC, you haven't even got to change it, you just got to click OK. It will choose the relevant display. So we just need to go through and click OK on all of these. Now when the EFIS comes out, I will hopefully push different firmware to make it a little bit easier, but this will still work with the EFIS. All you'd need to do is when you have your EFIS configs, you would then just choose the LCD display one for the EFIS and LCD display for the FCU, sorry, and then for the LCD display for the FCU. But now we have our outputs all aside, we can now click save, and I believe if I even click test, yeah, we'll get some it will test through all those sort of functions there and we can see that the device is displaying all these things as we sort of would expect. Now we'll stop that uh, and I'm just going to reset the device. Okay, so now we've got all of maybe like that is set up and ready to run. That is now the device plug and play ish for Moby flight. So the next thing to do is to get this connected up to the flight sim and see it in action. So just while we are waiting for the simulator to load in the background, I just wanted to quickly talk through what I would love to happen in the community because 
the device that we that we've uh, got out there is we're selling it as a device and this Mobify plugin is like it's a free thing that we've done but we would love for the community to grab hold of this and start developing the the profiles for the different aircraft out there as well so this is just sort of hopefully a sample that will get you up and running with the ability to take a different a a320 family aircraft and configure the um the display for that so just to go in a bit more detail about exactly how to do that once you've chosen your um, uh, once you've chosen your sim variable in this case this is for the as I said for the uh, flyby wire you for the display you choose it as an output device you choose the mega and it's a type of the LCD display we want to choose obviously just the the FCU but now we can see what we pass in here is we're just passing this string um, this isn't actually going to be displayed on the FCU this is what we're passing to it we're sort of tricking the firmware into taking this text and using that in the code to get an output so here we say set speed equals dollar 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 we can see here all of these um, strings here you can pass followed by an equal symbol and then you can pass it the variable so if you were to find the the speed variable for uh, a, a different a320 family aircraft and you wanted to build your own profile for it if you look at all of these strings here um, and also do check the PDF document which uh, is available on the github as well uh, that is if I show you here this data sheet here if you look through here this explains a lot of it and it will give you all of the um, examples uh, of all the different code and a lot more in there as well so definitely look at that but if we use these strings and we pass it uh, that string with an equal symbol followed by the, the variable to be displayed then that will happen so hopefully people should be able to build up their own config files as well and share those with the community so that's why I'd, I'd love to happen and see that as well because uh, I just wish I had the time to do it for everything but the actual main part of this uh, project is the device itself and this is like a hopefully going to be a community spirit sort of thing so now we've got that out there let's just see where we are with Microsoft Flight Simulator loading okay guys so I've got the flight sim up and running all I've had to do is go into Moby Flight and make sure you do click the the run button as well um, otherwise you won't get the display up and running so make sure you click the run button in Moby Flight and you'll see that we've got uh, the display as it is in the aircraft at the moment um, dots and dashes and the piece de resistance can we get that positive sign yes we can there it is and if we go all the way down we'll get that negative number as well um, and we'll do some speed changes here we can see that all working and can we get rid of that yes we can and same with the heading can and same with the altitude change in here as well pass that back I'm uh, so so happy with how this has come out guys um, and hopefully as I said in that last video as well you'll be able to grab a hold of these config files and start building your own ones um, for some of the other aircraft and as I said the EFIS as well that's coming very soon um, that should just plug and play straight into this uh, and that should just get you should not have to change anything with what we've already done so if we do this work today just to get the the um the arduino flash with the firmware to get the config files adjusted in moby flight as we need them and yeah a bit of a bit of tweaking just in the moby flight uh, configurator itself press play and there it is working straight away i'm really looking forward to seeing uh, people's pictures um, photos videos of this working in their devices as well uh, and their setups um, I'm really hoping that this is going to be uh, a game changer for the the, the a320 simulation um, community um, I am always around for questions where I can answer them as well but as I said the, the main focus of this company is to get these hardware devices out and we'll try and get them as compatible as we can with with um, 
uh, with Moby Flight for people who want to just plug and play and we try and make sure that the down at the hardware level it's e easy to use accessible and fully controllable for those who want to develop it and put it into their existing systems as well but yeah I'm uh, I'm just so grateful for the support from everybody that's pre-ordered and got these devices they'll be coming out to you very soon I promise as soon as I get them out I will get them out to you as soon as I can um, and for the rest of the community for uh, for just being very supportive and interested and saying kind things about this project I'm really really excited um, to be able to bring this to you uh, and as I said the EFIS panel uh, the EFIS display not the panel will be coming out very soon as well hopefully but yeah uh, please do check out the documentation on GitHub, there's a full PDF there, like a data spec of the whole thing there if you've got questions around it. Uh, the website has got a lot of detail around um, like measurements and uh, sort of the processes we've been through today uh, and lots of information about it. And it's, uh, I'm not sure the date of the release of this video, but pre-orders haven't got long left, so if you do want to get a hold of one of these, make sure you do it soon because the pre-order price is going to go back up to full price once the pre-orders close but yeah thank you once again um, for all of your support and for watching this video hopefully it's been useful to you and hopefully you'll be able to get this working in your systems as well thanks again bye bye